So we could do a couple things, like we said, to help kind of gel our uh, our trail with our, our sword mesh a little better. And, you know, some particles will help do that for sure. The other thing I'm noticing that is just, you know, it's just kind of hard to tell with this... Um, with this default, you know, blue and gray kind of checkerboard missing material pattern. So let's go ahead and make a material that will make our blade glow, kind of like a lightsaber, if you will. Um, and this is the same trick as we did before with the health cross. You know, really simple. All we're doing is taking, find this here, our mesh in our browser. We're just taking our bottom UVs uh, in channel zero. And you can see the blade is just on the bottom half and the health is on the top. So... Let's go ahead in our browser and create a new material. Right click new material and just call it fx underscore sword mesh underscore mat. And then I've got, um, before I bring it over, this, this health cross mask is the exact same black and white mask that we used before. So we want to be able to see to our mesh inside of here, inside of the material editor. So let's take our meshes, grab the static mesh, and then go ahead and hit the green arrow and we can't see it now because it's a black background, but if we change it to translucent, now we can see that our mesh is in here. So we'll change this um, actually to, uh, we'll leave it translucent and then unlit actually, I take that back. So let's bring in that, the health cross mask that we used before so we can mask out just the top and bottom separately. And then take the texture of that and then hold down T and bring it in so we have a texture sample. And then uh, let's go ahead and take a, constant 3 by hitting the letter 3 inside of uh, the material editor and then multiplying the two together. So do RGB from both and then pull that into emissive. And then let's go to our constant 3 and do a value of, I think we started with 1.8, uh, no, I'm sorry, it was 0 0.2 and then 0 0.05. And then we're going to go ahead and just multiply all these by 16 so we can activate the bloom effect. And you can see it's only working on just the top. Oops, I did I did the wrong value there. So we'll do 10.2 times uh, 16, not 0 0.016 or whatever I typed. So there we go. So we get something that matches pretty well. We could tweak this later on if we wanted to. But we've activated the bloom so it'll look pretty cool. So we go ahead and close that. And then we need to assign it to our mesh. So bring up the static mesh editor. Uh, finer material. Where is that at? Right there. There we go. And then go ahead and plug this into our LOD zero material. So we have that working, and then that looks pretty good. The only thing um, we really can't see the hilt um, because it's black on black. So let's go back into our material again, and then let's go ahead and add to this end result. Let's do a constant one and do like 0 0.05, just so we can get a little bit and then add the result of the multiply with 0 0.05. So it's going to brighten it up uh, in general ever so slightly, but we just want to get a slight off gray, which like almost blends with our background here, but that's okay. So we're going to hit compile, and now we should be able to look at it, and cool, we can see the hilt going on now. So if you're asking yourself really quick, why didn't we use a vert color node? Uh, that's because we're not spawning this mesh inside of Cascade, and we're not going to want to do any kind of vert tinting. We don't really have control uh, over the color of it. Uh, except through the material. So that's why we don't have that.